if you guys don't follow our Instagram account, definitely go over to Instagram, check it out. Tour life, I believe, uh, tour life underscore underscore podcast. Is that what it is, Silas? Tour life underscore podcast. Let me see if I can make this big so I can actually read these things. Um, so we take clips. Shout out to our social media guy, Grant. Social social Grant Clips, I think is what we're calling him. Grant, that sounds like a good name. Shout out to Grant Clips. He's the one that uh, clips all these things out. Also, Silas kind of pulls the clips out and then he edits them. And uh, we had some interesting comments on some of these, Yuli. So I wanted to kind of bring some of these up. So the first one we're going to go through is the clip of you talking about how disc golf is a little bit of like gambling. And uh, we're going to read through some of these comments. So the first one says, this is from Coach. You guys are paying $200 to buy into a four-day tournament most of which is probably covered by your sponsors. This isn't even close to poker slash gambling. And then you responded with the, it's literally gambling. Um, just Googled gambling says to play a game for a chance to win money. Uh, yeah. And that's basically what we're doing. And I, I get, I can see why some people don't like the word. I mean, I was going back and forth with one person that was making the claim that gambling and, and betting are different that those two things aren't the same. And that, I mean, that actually blew Kelsey's mind. She was like, I, I gotta, I gotta walk out of this. I can't read. I can't read these responses. I was, anymore. I was honestly reading some of these comments and just kind of cracking up, it, man. I mean, it was so okay. Imagine, cause I mean, you're married, man. So let's, let's just walk through this real quick. Imagine we have a gambling problem. Okay. And our wives are helping us and being like, honey, listen, we got it. We got to stop gambling. It's not good. Whatever. And, uh, you know, you start a couple of days later, go by, you're like, I'm not going to gamble anymore. I'm not going to gamble more. A couple of days go by it's Sunday. It's football. You're watching it. You're screaming. You're getting jacked up and she's coming in. She's like, did you get, are you gambling on this game? And you're like, no, honey, no, stop. I, I told you I'm not going to I, I placed a bet. I, I placed a bet on this game. I'm not gambling. <laughs> I placed a bet. Uh, you would get thrown out of the house so fast. Gambling and betting are the same exact thing. And uh, if you want to argue against that, well, I, I, I don't know how to argue against that. It, well, it's literally the same thing. The, the one argument that I saw the most was, uh, no, because you have control over the outcome. So, here, But here's the thing. If I am playing, let's say, an 800-rated player, and they want to bet me $5 straight up, Mm-hmm. I could break my leg and not finish the round and I lose. That is a possibility. It's not likely, but there's a possibility that I don't finish. And what would happen? I would lose $5. It's a gamble. There's let's, better odds for me. Let's throw this scenario out. You just graduate. Oh, you, you don't graduate college. Okay. You're in college. You don't graduate college. You buy You use all your money. You have to buy a vehicle. And you're and you go and you say, you know what? I'm going to try to be a professional disc golfer. And you travel the whole the United States, going all over, spending all your money week to week, literally needing to cash at every tournament to survive to go to the next tournament. Does that not sound like a gamble? A bit yeah. of a gamble. Yeah, you're, you're and and at the end of the day, betting on yourself. At the end of the day, life is is life is a, we we make gambles all the time. We make bets 100%. all the time. Like every single day, there is a gamble to everything. So I get I get the pushback a little bit, but let's let's be real. We are we are kind of in a way gambling a little bit, and and the way it's for not that kind of in a way we're gambling yeah, I mean, a lot of bit. We are, and <laughs> it's going to get more and more removed. Once mm -hmm. our money isn't necessarily in the pocket, right? Once there aren't. Uh, entry fees that are accounting for more than 50% of what we're playing for. If there was no entry fees and there was all these sponsors playing and we just show up and we try to play and we, and we, but even then there's a little bit of gamble because you're paying for flights, <laughs> you're playing for hotels, you're, you're paying, yeah, you're, you're paying for all these things in the hopes of potentially making money at this tournament or potentially playing well enough at this tournament to where maybe you get sponsored or whatnot. Right. Uh, well, was there any other go, go ahead. Yeah. Pull up yeah, those comments last, again, Silas. Last point too, is somebody was like, well, you don't even pay your entry. Your sponsor does. Well, that's part of my contract that I get. It's my mm -hmm. money. It's my money that they are putting in there. It's not their money. It's mine. 
it's in my contract to where I get the seven thousand or eight thousand dollars per year for me to play in tournaments. Once they sign that contract, they're paying my entry fees. It's mine. Also, there are there are other people in here, and this happens a lot, and I get it. Uh, we post a lot of things, and the next one we're going to go to here in a second. It's this is a hundred percent what happened, but. Uh, the majority of the time that we're talking on here, the, the podcast is called tour life for a reason. We're talking about stuff that is kind of relevant to me and you on tour. And a lot of times we talk about stuff that's on tour. So I, I, I understand. And I get some people that are like, well, when I play in tournaments, like I'm just playing for the experience. So I don't consider it gambling. I get that because when I show up to blackjack and sit down to, you know, I have a hundred dollars and I'm playing $5 blackjack. That's different than someone that's sitting down and being like, I need to, I need to win. I need to make money off of this. When I sit down, I'm like, that hundred dollars is gone. It might as well be like a nice steak dinner. It might as well be going to the movies. It might as well be going to adventure, uh, like an amusement park. I'm, I'm spending that hundred dollars on the entertainment of playing blackjack. I'm not trying to make money. And I get that from a lot of people. You show up to play a tournament and you're, you're, you're entering because you want to test yourself and that is fun to you. And that's entertainment. A lot of people on tour, that's not what it is. This is their job. If they continue to go out and not perform, they're going to have to find something else to make them money. You can't just keep spending money and losing it and think that's going to be a career. It just, it just won't work. So, um, yeah, life is a gamble. There you go. Munchy, Munchy Lego. Life, life, life <laughs> is a gamble. Uh, I think there's a song that's even written about that. I won't sing it. I'll, I'll save your guys' ears for that. All right, size. pull up the other one. There's one more. I think this is more for me. So this was the one where we're talking about, uh, oh, I was talking about where if I'm uh, playing in a tournament, a professional tournament, and during the middle of the round, someone comes up to me and starts like asking me questions about like how, how the holes played, where's the OB, what's going on, all that. That is an awkward situation, right? Because you're trying to compete against each other. It, it can be an aw awkward situation. Some of these were interesting because, uh, all right, here we go. We'll, we'll, we'll just read through them. So this one says, how's it awkward? I've been playing. I've, I've had plenty of people on my cards play blind and I kindly just tell them where the basket is um, and how I normally play the shot. I, I'll even say what common lines are that people tape. Uh, I'm not sure who Chaser is. I don't recognize him, so I don't know if he's a touring player. Again, different situation. If I'm playing in a C tier and, and Yuli, you even kind of mentioned, stop it right there, Yuli, Asaz, because I want to talk about this one. When you kind of mentioned, like, you show up to tournaments sometimes. You've done this yourself at some of the lower level tournaments i'm talking more on like the pro tour is where it gets awkward if i'm at a b tier c tier a tier and someone asks me it's not that big of a deal it gets awkward more on the pro scene when someone's doing it and i, I guess some people don't agree and one of those actually being robert burridge right here who is a professional he says if someone is playing blind usually it is because of circumstances they can't really control. I have never had any awkwardness with helping a player who is playing blind. It's always players who don't want to help their peer succeed that make it bad. It is as simple as if it's as simple as distance, OB, and where the miss is, or if it's blind, how you attack it and let them do their own thing. And here, I'll be the first one. Robert, first off, appreciate you coming out there. I'll be the first one. I've played with you before, and you've asked me how far something is. Buy a rangefinder and figure it out yourself. Like I, I mean, I, I'm just being honest. I'm I'm honestly being, and I, I like Robert. He, I, I've I've really enjoyed playing with him. I played him at U. I played him with the USDGC where he was like playing lights out. He was like the in the lead or whatever. But I'm just saying, it's there comes a point in time where we are competing against each other, right? There are there are reasons why Brooks Kepka got in trouble for throwing up the five to let. Um, I can't remember who it was. Let people know what he th what shot he hit. Like you can't do that in golf. You can't actively ask someone in golf what club did you use. There's reason why those rules are in place. We don't have any rules like that in disc golf, but I could totally see that happening in the future. Of where Yuli, it's not fair. It is not fair 
for for me to be able to go up to you after you throw a shot and ask you what did you throw that is not a fair situation for the entire field i should not gain an advantage because you're my friend same thing and and this is a hot take same thing as you should not gain an advantage if you're playing with your friends and you go hey i think my disc crossed in bounds and it didn't and you have people saying it did because you're friends with them and they give you the benefit of the doubt because they're friends with them that's not fair either so this whole situation of like and and i was just gonna let this pass but it is a it is an issue there I, i've had multiple people come up to me and talk to me about how they don't like it so there are people out on, on the course that aren't and it is and here's the thing i normally help people out because that because it is awkward and i don't want to be a douchebag and 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 tell people like no figure it out yourself man but I, I don't want to help people either. I'm trying to beat you. I need all the help yeah. I can get. Yeah. Yeah. I think it comes down to this. It's pretty simple. It's sports. There are different kinds of competitors in sports, period. There's always going to be nice competitors, and there's always going to be people who are quiet and keep to themselves, and there's always going to be douchebags. No matter which way you look at it in whatever sport you play. If I'm playing on a course, I ask somebody, and he says, no, I'm good. I'm fine. I I'm a competitor. Yes. I'm fine with it. Okay. Not asking him. I'll ask this guy. If nobody tells me, then I get it. I'm not taking any ill will from that situation. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I understand that it's sports. Now, if somebody is gracious enough to be like, yeah, it's like there's oh, which most people are. Most people are. Hey, yeah. There's OB on the left. It's an Island hole. You got to cross up on the right side. There's a blah, blah, blah. blah and they give you the breakdown. Most people are willing to do that and it doesn't take them out of their comfort zone and they can do that. And that is perfectly okay because by the rules, they are allowed to do that as of right now. Yep. But what it comes down to is it's preference. You don't want to do it, Brody. You don't have to. Yep. And there shouldn't be any sort of awkwardness any which and way that, about it. And if you I take it, you. and if you take it as awkwardness, that's because you're soft. That's because you're soft. And that's it. You asked, you got the answer. And if you're going to be like, Ooh, why didn't he tell me like what a douche move? No, you're soft. That means you don't play sports. That's the way that it is. Yeah, I like and that stuff. When you're, when you're playing, let's say you're playing pickup basketball or even competitive basketball, there's trash talking going right all the time. And most of the time at the end of the game, what do you do? You shake hands, a good game. Mm -hmm. And then you go off, you go on with your life and there's yeah. respect there. There was another comment in there saying, uh, I don't know if you can pull that one up, Silas, real quick. There was one more comment I wanted to go over. Uh, you make good points there, Yuli. And I, I agree completely. Uh, there was one where someone claimed that I have done this before. Okay, yeah, Danny Bochamp, which go up a little bit, which I, that name, that da name does sound familiar. I think I have, have you played with him? Yeah. Is, is, yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely have played with him before. He says, says the guy who literally asked a thousand questions, even if not playing blind. So I don't know what he's referring to. I would love to get a little bit more detail what that means. I'm sure he was coming after me in that comment. I'll be the first to say there are multiple times where I ask like, what the heck is going on this hole? And the reason for it is because the caddy book doesn't always line up with what the PDGA rules say. And then we have people on the first tee, like telling you like, oh, today, the, this is how these holes are playing. So yes, it is really nice to sometimes just get a full confirmation of like, this is how this hole's playing. I'm not, I'm not asking someone how far a hole, a far, far, far a shot is at a professional tournament. I'm just not, I'm going to have a range finder to do it myself, or I'm just not going to ask. And that's just me. But if you do ask, I don't have a problem with it either. Just don't get mad if the person says no. I'm good. I'm not like you said. I'm good, man. Figure. Sorry, figure it out. Hey, sometimes and sometimes you're in a spot to where you just went bogey, 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 and you don't want to answer any questions about anything. Yeah. So if somebody, <laughs> imagine if I just went triple, double, single, and then somebody's like, "Hey, Yuli, do you know what this hole's all about?" I'd be like, "Bro, scram! Like, I, I need to get back in my zone. I don't have time for this. Get out of here, man."